Hello, genealogists. This is Craig, and this is Just Genealogy, and we're going to continue our discussion of genealogy standards found in second edition revised and from the Board for Certification of Genealogists. A reminder that I do not represent the Board of Certification of Genealogists. Just been an associate for over 25 years. So anything that I say is just my opinion and does not represent the board. We're only going to be talking about one standard today, standard number 50, assembling conclusions from evidence, because the next session is going to be dealing with using DNA evidence. I've decided to keep them separate, and it's a separate subsection within the, the section on standards for researching. So standard number 50, assembling conclusions from evidence. Once a genealogist resolves conflicting evidence, all remaining relevant evidence items are compatible with, it, with a single answer to the research question. This answer becomes a conclusion. Credible conclusions may rest on direct, indirect, or negative evidence in any combination. Credible conclusions include placing individuals accurately in their families or other groups. Where appropriate, genealogists distinguish among adoptive, foster, genetic step, and other kinds of familial relationships. See glossary for definitions of accurate, compatible evidence, conclusion, conflicting evidence, direct evidence, evidence, genetic relationship, indirect evidence, negative evidence, research question, and resolution. This probably is one of the longest glossary lists that we've done so far, and my recommendation is that you be sure to go back and look at the glossary, which is in the back of the standards book. It is a significant portion of the book, the glossary is. I guess the hard part here is, if you only were successful in resolving all the conflicting evidence, and all the remaining relevant evidence was compatible with a single answer in a research question, it could be that you would, in fact, not ever be able to write anything when very little would get written. There are conclusions, and there are conclusions which, in fact, are able to resolve all the conflicting evidence, but sometimes you're not able to resolve the conflicting evidence. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't put it out there with the proper caveats. They're in front of evidence explained, in the two chapters, which you, if you haven't read the two chapters of Evidence Explained yet, in the very beginning, you really should. I've got a talk on that somewhere. I'll have to find it. I'll put it in the description. Because again, those are probably the most two important chapters relating to genealogy out there. But it will help you to understand that there are certain words that you can use that will help you to assemble a conclusion from the perspective of uh, being able to write the final report. In other words, recognize that when you do it, hopefully at some point in time in the future, it will change, but we want to get it out there anyway with the necessary caveats. Now, it may be that you're unable to, quote, conclude anything. That shouldn't prevent you from writing it up. Now, that may prevent you from actually getting it into a journal, but recognize that until we write it down, it doesn't count. And if you're put off by the fact, well, there was conflicting evidence, there's no reason I can't resolve it, I shouldn't write it down, then you're not helping. Sometimes there's not a single answer. Sometimes there's an if-then, or there's a maybe, or there's a possible. I'm just saying that it's how you use the word conclusion. Recognize that in genealogy, everything we do could at some later date be found just totally false. You know, daily, the amount of information that's available, the amount of data that's available to convert into information just is astronomically different than it was 20, 10, 20, 30 years ago. But do recognize that in order for you to have that credible conclusion, 
it has to rest on evidence, whether it be direct, indirect, or negative. And I love this in any combination. That just makes it so much fun. I believe that if you are able to place individuals accurately in their families and other groups, but there is some nuance that prevents you from being absolutely positively sure, then you just have to state it. And again, those words for how you should state it are in evidence explained in one of the first two chapters. You know, where it's like, it is possible that, or it is likely that rather than have that those words that make you look like you were absolutely positive when you weren't. Don't make yourself look absolutely positive when you're not. And for the love of God, if we've got something that is conflicting evidence that you found, don't ignore it because it will be found by someone else, I promise you. So just one today. It's actually a fun one because it brings, you know, it's sort of like, this is the last point, although it's not because we're going to talk about using DNA evidence before we get into standards for writing. But until you get really to this point, you're not going to be doing much final writing. You may be like me who writes as he goes, and I highly recommend that you write as you go. The concept of doing all this research and keeping it all in your head and in little pieces of paper or on your phone or on your computer and then assembling it all together in one fell swoop is just, um, in my mind, dangerous. So write as you go, assemble those conclusions as you go, one by one, and then put them all together. And we will soon begin chapter four, standards of writing. This has been Craig. This has been Just Genealogy. And uh, I guess we're moving right on down the road Thank you so much.